Hi, welcome to this special Creative Tech Tip uh, episode on how to build a hybrid mobile app for your business. Uh, today, we are going to talk about analytic with app built with Ionic Framework. So if you don't know what is Ionic Framework, um, actually, you can see it on the screen here. And this like awesome hybrid framework that help you to build Android and iOS mobile app. And today, um, we want to talk about this new amazing feature uh, called Ionic Analytic. We'll take a first look of it and how awesome and how easy to using this new function to track everything you want to know for your app. So before that, uh, before Ionic released this uh, awesome new function, uh, we actually used to use Google Analytics to track performance. Um, if you want to learn more about that, you can check out Nick's blog uh, about this uh, technique. Uh, again, um, with the new feature released by Ionic team, um, checking is 10,000 times easier. So uh, now let's take a quick look uh, about how to implement Ionic Analytics into your app uh, with a really easy step. Uh, first, before we go further, Ionic do have an um, official document on here um, to teach you step by step to install uh, Analytics with a fresh uh, new app. I assume that you already built your first little mobile app for yourself, for your company, for your business. Uh, you just want to implement this new feature into your app. So how can we do that? You actually need to first go to uh, Ionic IO and log in here. Get an account, log in right here. And then after you log in, you can either create an app here or you can simply just go to your terminal you can easily just do uh, Ionic upload. So uh, that is the app I built before. Uh, now I need to integrate this new function, this analytic function into my app. The first step you will do actually is very simple. You will need to add the Ionic service code using this line of code and add the Ionic service analytics right here. So after you do that, you just need to go to your index file to include these two JavaScript files. So for example, go to my index. You see I include I included these two JavaScript files right under my Ionic bundle.js right here, like so. And the next step, uh, you will you need to inject the Ionic uh, service into your Angular model, app.js, which is I inject it right after my Ionic, right here, like so. And then you need to conflict your Ionic app provider with your app ID and your API key. And how to get your app ID go is actually right here. That is your app ID. And then the public API key is when you go in here. Go to keys, and that will be your public API keys right here. So copy and paste those, and put it into your app. So for example, in my app, I have a conflict, conflict objects right here. So basically, you need to inject the Ionic app provider at the end. What you need to do is just need to identify the app right here. So you basically copy and paste, and then replace your app ID and the, and the API key right here. And then after that, all you need to do is to register your app to use the analytic. So uh, under the run function, uh, it's like right here. I inject the Ionic analytics right here, and then we'll call it right here, register right here. So that's it. You are all set and ready to test out the new awesome Ionic analytic. Let's open your terminal again in this app, I just time Ionic Surf. So I want to do two things. I, I want to know like when user, after user login, uh, when they actually go in to see my course. So I want to know two things. Like uh, is user actually see this course? 
with a course ID and course title. And also when user actually see the lesson, like the lesson and see the lesson ID and lesson title. And I want to know which user actually see what course and what lesson. So all this can be easily done in Ionic Analytic. So I show you how now. So in my app, I have a lesson controller and lesson. So this page responds responsible to this page. So uh, and, and just in this page, the controller, the lesson controller as the controller of this page. So, so first I want to know like when user click a lesson, I want to know which lesson they click and who click these lessons. So we'll track two things. So we can easily just bind the event to this click event. If you see my HTML, so when user click, like see here is ng repeat to repeat all the lessons in lessons. So when user click, we actually trigger event called select lesson. And we're gonna pass in the lesson ID and the lesson title right here. So we can just like pass in the ID and name and which is lesson title. So so that is the function to call the Ionic Analytic. So first you design an event name. The event name user is viewing a lesson, so called view lessons. And then I put in two objects. That's actually for like better organization and you will see uh, later why I do that in the Ionic uh, panel. So I actually pass in the lessons, which is, I want to load the lesson ID, which pass it in here, and then the lesson name, which is also passing in the function right here. So now I know user click which lesson. And then I want to know which user, so I create a different object called user object. And I pass in actually the user ID and the user name. And if you're wondering like what is this, uh, why I have a user object under the scope, I actually using Firebase here. I have a three-way data binding, and I ask Firebase to return a current user object, and I bind that to uh, a user object under scope. So I will have user ID and user name when user click it. So okay, so let's see this in action. Okay, so. We refresh the app. So let's pay attention to the console log right here. So when I click a lesson, let's see, I click this lesson. Look at the log. It actually say Ionic Analytics queuing event to send later. View lessons. View lessons. You see the object right here? We actually send two objects. Uh, back to Ionic. One is lessons, which have lesson ID, which we pass in in the controller, and the name. And also a user object, which is my name and my user ID. So let's do the same thing. So as you see, I already like put in the code right here. Um, that's actually gonna load immediately when user actually go into the course page, uh, right here. So let's say when user like Go into a course, and it's already triggered right here. You see, like view course. Same thing. Pass in a course and a user object. We pass in the state parameters. I pass in the course ID actually through uh, the URL, and then a data title is just um, I get the course data. And same thing, we gotta pass in the user object, like user ID and user name. Like so. So basically, in this view, I send two objects view, view course and view lessons to Ionic. So let's see like, how Ionic receives the data and how can we, how, the, how amazing the backend is. And then refresh. See right here. View lessons, view course, and low. The low event is Whenever you, you implement the Ionic uh, analytic, you will have that automatically 
enable to help you track like everything happened on, on view. So uh, we are interesting here is two custom event we created. So let's so see here, uh, view courses actually happened 18 times and view lesson, view lesson happened eight times. So in a segmentation, you can see how powerful this uh, data can be. So let's say view lesson, I will segment view lesson, but I segment by username. Username is equal to my name. Boom. You see, because I'm the only user viewing it, so now you can see like, you can filter down to me, like, like the particular user, like how many times you view the lessons. And you don't, you don't need to do that. Uh, you can just like see the view lesson data. By lesson ID. So you can see like, this is the lesson ID. Actually, it will be easier to see the lesson name. You can pass in here. So like, we can see like how many uh, view of each lessons right here by their name. And it's a really powerful visual right here. And again, using combined different data, you can have like a more detailed look of um, how user actually interact with your app. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this little tech tips theory. If you have any question, uh, don't forget to comment and ask there and I will answer any question you have as much as I can.